Here we go again, one more airplane until we are back in a car, stateside, heading down to Baltimore. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the United States of America. We have just landed at Logan Airport in Boston. We are headed home. However, we're taking a minor detour, which isn't so minor, and heading into mid-Pennsylvania to get something. What is it? It's 4 a.m. and we have just picked up an extra passenger. Ta-da! Can't wait to put this guy in the boat. We're gonna have to ship it to the Azores first though. We made it home. It's 8 a.m. Next day. Hello! Sammy girl, going poopy? Oh, good Sammy. Hey, Sammy. Yes, Sammy girl. So, we're having a bit of a stressful time here. This is probably the biggest challenge of traveling, um, living this kind of lifestyle, is figuring out the visa situation in Europe, Schengen, and Portugal specifically. We are currently trying to get passport pictures taken for our visas, but we it's very confusing as to what kind of visa would be the best for us in our very unique situation. We live on our sailboat, and our sailboat is in Europe but we are not citizens of Europe. <laughs> Today, our task is to go to Washington, D.C. Thank goodness we live somewhat near there. And we're going to go to the embassy, the Portuguese embassy. Of course, tried calling them many, many, many times yesterday and no one picked up, so we're just going. So the big issue is it's time away from the stuff that we came back to the States to do. Like when we come back to the States, I work like a dog to save up money so that we can keep cruising. Like for this situation, like we tried calling and making an appointment and all that, but there was no answer. And one thing we found going to any official government building in Portugal is they never answer. So the frustrating part is that means I need to not be in the office, not work a whole day, so we can do all this paperwork and get all this put together. So we've brought with us pretty much everything that we could imagine that we might need in hopes that that helps it get through and that we don't have to make two trips, but we're kind of planning two trips for this. Now the other issue is timing. So we've been told that this can take about a month and we don't really have a month left here in the States. And then the other really confusing part is Schengen itself. So Schengen is a really weird name and it turns out it is the place where the treaty was signed and most of the countries in the EU are part of Schengen, but not all of them. So uh, the UK and Croatia are not part of Schengen, but still, well, England's still EU for a while. And the way it works is you automatically get a 90 day visa in Schengen, anywhere you want. But once your 90 days run out, then you're supposed to leave for the next 90 days. So it's 90 days in a 180 day period. Now we first arrived in August, which means our 180, 
180 day period should reset, I believe February or March, somewhere around there. But when we're at the immigration office, they told us, oh, don't worry, December 31st, the clock resets, January 1st, you can come back. So we're planning on flying back early January, and part of my concern is that we'll get there and they say, oh, you can't come in. Many stresses to all these unanswered questions, and we're just kind of hoping for the best and doing what we can while we can. Smiling is frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> we are having like major doubts, worries, and concerns because we're worried that we're gonna get there and they're gonna say, why don't you have an appointment? When we go, when we looked online to make an appointment, Watch there's like a million different doctor, options. And it's telling you like, if you are this, fill out these things. If you are that, fill out these things. There's no general, I don't know what I am field. So our thought is we're just gonna show up, talk with someone, figure out what direction to go in, and then we'll get all the papers together and tackle it from there. We're worried that when we show up, they're going to not let us speak to anybody because we didn't have an appointment. But we couldn't make an appointment because they wouldn't answer the phone. We're in DC, we found a spot to park, which is incredible. Across the left section, there is one subtitle that says, make any appointment. Okay. okay. And you, you should follow that, and then you will be uh, at the, uh, what they call uh, the form. You need to fill it up and submit to the consulate. Okay, so we make an appointment online yes. and then we bring in the form? No, ma'am. That's not what I said. You submit to the consulate, and the consulate will reply the message for you. And let you know what next step you need to go forward. Okay. Okay, we'll do that. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. That's good. Beep! Beep! <laughs> Alright, well we made it to the Emerald Castle and we weren't allowed in. They're sitting right there. Yeah, so this is annoying. We called and they don't answer the phone. And then when we come here, they're saying that no, you have to do it, you have to make an appointment first. But they are obviously there, not answering the phone. So this has been... We uh, can't make appointments yeah. in person, we have to email to make an appointment. Yeah, so a little bit of frustration. So instead we're gonna go to Lowe's and pick out sinks for the boat. To make some use of this time. Why do they have a menorah Merry Christmas? Something. So as a true Baltimorean, I grew up going to Fadley's, which is in the famous Lexington market, and it is the best crab cake joint in the area. <laughs> to Fadley's! Nobody else in this car had ever been, so we made it a point to go while we were in town. And guys, what did you think of your family's crab cakes? It was amazing. Amazing. So good. Loved it. <laughs> awesome. I think it was a success. <laughs> while we're in Baltimore, uh, we feel it's really important to take advantage of the fact that it is a cultural salad here. I mean, we have all kinds of foods, all kinds of people. And so one of our favorite places to go is Dim Sum, which is a really hidden gem in Baltimore uh, with authentic Chinese cuisine. Now, I know Baltimore gets a really bad rap on the news. I mean, yesterday, seven cars were torched. There was a shooting in a pretty nice area. Like, it's got some issues. But in these kind of interesting places, there's just 
these awesome gems hidden in there. And just, it's funny, like people are afraid to even go into the city and then they totally miss out on the wonders that the city has. What? Yes. Yeah, so Where this, are you, we, you might ask? So this place is like the back of everything. Like you'd never expect there to be what's coming. my aunt's house and my whole family is together and we've decided to take on a project at macrame family macrame so I just wanted to show you guys this process <laughs> all right here we are <laughs> family macrame hello hello, hello. And uh, okay, my red title link over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all here first time before. ever. <laughs> I think they did this all wrong. Bye, Morty. We're gonna go to a Ravens game, but you can't come because you're a dog. Sorry. Virginia to hang out for the weekend with one of Maddie's friends and it's gonna be awesome because it's like so peaceful out there we're going into the mountains and we're just gonna be in a cabin that my friend's boyfriend built <laughs> We actually made an appointment this time, 
So we're going to see the consulate in the Portuguese embassy in DC so that we can kickstart the process of getting our residency visa in the Azores, which will allow us to travel freely throughout Europe without having to leave every 90 days. So we're gonna be applying for what they call a D7 residency visa. Um, we have an appointment with the consulate. Okay, um, can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Benevent. What time's supposed to be your appointment again, ma'am? At, uh, 11 o'clock. Okay, you're gonna give me one second, okay, please? Okay. Thank you. This is the guy I talked to. Him. In the process of getting our visas, we need to get FBI fingerprint and background checks done. We have to mail all that back to them at the embassy. And then we get our visa. Come check on Wimpuff, make sure he's doing all right. Well, looks like I need to do a little repair to the shrink wrap because the uh, door seems to have blown off and that's why there's a hole. So they say that people who own boats are crazy and people who own two boats are twice as crazy. It's true. Honestly, if you wanna go cruising, do not buy two boats. So we're out, we're sailing and we have to be paying to store this guy on land and you know, just the general upkeep, make sure everything's doing all right. So it's just, it's an extra headache in the back of my head, wondering how is the boat doing? So we have it on the hard, we have it shrink wrapped, everything should be good, so it's pretty low stress, but it's still an expense. Like, you know, I just had to pay for two more years of land storage, and that could have not been spent if we didn't have a second boat. The problem is we really like that boat, so <laughs> that's why we don't sell them. We're twice as crazy, twice as stupid. That's cruising, that's boating. Well, we're heading back to the boat in just a few days, so we got a whole bunch of errands we gotta get taken care of. I don't know if we have time to actually get it all done. My hair is long. It's time to get it cut. We are so excited to get back to the boat and actually start these projects. We're not gray anymore. We went to the Ceph agent and good news, some really disgusting things that we have found in our boat uh, since we left and it's disturbing. For painting commissions shipped anywhere in the world, email me at artisticeyestudio at gmail.com. Book your next adventure with Travel GNU, a website that makes it easy to book hotels, rental cars, and tours anywhere in the world. Find the link for Travel GNU in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.